Hey, how's it going? I'm Bray of Thorn. Welcome to the channel and uh, my review of the Alexander PC's Centurion. This little beauty right back here. Now, for those of you who are not new to the channel, you've been watching for a while, you've heard of Alexander PCs and talked about them quite a few times. They are a smaller system integrator. There are much larger ones out there, your, your iBuy Power, Cyber Power, your powers out there and companies like that. Whereas Alexander PCs, came in kind of out of nowhere. And uh, there was a, there's a, a, a very you know, valued member of our community, uh, Angry Beaver, who recommended them a while back. And shout out, Angry Beaver, what's up? And uh, said, hey, you should take a look at Alexander PCs. I got a PC from them and it was awesome. And of course, every time a new system integrator comes into the picture, I, I, I want to sort of get a feel for them, see, you know, maybe, maybe talk to someone from there and, and see what they're about. Because when it comes down to it, there isn't a single system integrator who hasn't had, you know, given one or another person in my community, you know, somewhat of a bad experience here and there. They'll take care of it eventually. Maybe there's a problem. Maybe the community member wasn't too happy with how they handled it and things like that can happen. But apparently, that just doesn't happen with Alexander PCs. You can ask anyone in the Swarm community, which is our Discord community. You can join that, the link below, by the way. Lots of testimonials there. It's an actual whole section for them if you're looking at a specific system integrator. Uh, and that's why I do that. Because I want, I mean, I can't go out and buy a million PCs. I'm still a pretty small uh, content creator. But each of you who ends up buying one can share your experience, whether good or bad. But it seems like every single person who's gotten not just a Centurion, but any PC from Alexander PCs has had nothing but good things to say about it. And that's that can partially be attributed to it being a smaller company and being able to give more of a, the personal touch when it comes to customer service and the buying experience and the ownership experience. But Alexander PCs, is they, they seem to want to build a community around this hobby here. And uh, they're doing a, a bang up job of it from what I can tell. But what you're here to, to, to find out about is not really about the company as much as the product that they make. And you can tell a lot about a company by the choices it makes in the hardware it decides to piece together for a gaming PC or PC for any other use case as well. There's a lot of RGB right here, but if you want something with no RGB, they'll do it. Uh, you want a trading PC, they have one that's specifically for that. Um, you want the most crazy, all out, custom hand painted, hardline liquid cooled system, you got it. You want a budget system, they got you too. They handle any and all types of customers. But the Centurion seems to fall into a category that I encounter the most. If you're not already aware of this, I stream on Twitch and I, uh, you know, Sunday, Tuesdays and Thursdays at around 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. And uh, I help people one-on-one -on -one with finding the best PC for their budget and their needs. And the budget I've seen the most often is around $2,000. There are a lot of options in that price range. This PC though, has taken care of pretty much anyone who has come in with that budget. And I've had so many good responses. It's almost like this review didn't even need to happen, but honestly, it did. Because I need to tell you why this thing can satisfy so many different various types of consumer. A PC user. Now, before we talk about specs, I do want to give a shout out and a thank you for the uh, amazing desktop background that was uh, custom made just for me, which I loosely used the, that terminology because they really just took my um, profile picture, my avatar picture, and just blew it up. So it's very, very, very pixelated. Thank, thank you for that. They also drew LGN in a very MS Paint kind of style. Absolute great taste. And uh, yeah, since you can see that this is in a setup, this is my girlfriend Ari's setup. So she's been gifted with staring at that every time she wants to use the PC. So thanks. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, a very, it's a very cool setup she's got here. And uh, I, I was actually really happy to put, I've had this PC for a while. She's been using it for a few months actually. And uh, it really helped us kind of get a feel for it, which there's a lot of PC reviews where I get it and I have to do the review immediately. That's it's kind of a, a, a difficult task sometimes to get a real feel for how a PC uh, behaves and how well it's put together. But um, yeah, it, it's, it fits her setup perfectly and uh, she's absolutely loved it. But uh, yeah, thanks for, the, thanks for the desktop background. It's 
choice, very nice. Now you get to stare at that the whole time, so enjoy that. So let's talk specs. This particular PC is the Intel version of this Centurion. You can get it in uh, Intel or AMD flavors. And this one comes with the i5 12600K on a, an Asus Tough Gaming Z690 motherboard. So fully capable of overclocking, doing all those kinds of things if you wanna get into that. At the heart of this system is an EVGA uh, 750G5 power supply, fully modular. It's a really, really nice power supply, very solid and actually about 150 watts over what the NVIDIA recommendation is for any system with a 3060 Ti, which is good because this 3060 Ti tends to use a bit more power than your, stand, your, your baseline reference 3060 Ti might use. And uh, this has a few of the upgrades that you can get. So the Centurion starts with the 3060 Ti and can go up to the 3070. And there are several different versions of the 3060 Ti that you can get and a couple versions of the 3070 you can get, depending on what stock Alexander PCs has on hand. It's one thing about them. They will not take your money unless the parts for your PC are sitting on the shelf. They won't just take your money and make you wait an undisclosed amount of time. Although that hasn't really been much of an issue in the industry lately with the surplus. That's how they did it even in the shortages, meaning they lost sales because of that, but the heat just, you know, TJ, the owner, what's up TJ? He just didn't feel comfortable taking people's money and making them wait however long. So that I felt was, with everything that was going on with certain companies out there, it was really refreshing to see that. Now the particular 3060 Ti that was shipped with this one is the heck and chonker of an Asus ROG Strix 3060 Ti. I mean, this thing is massive. It, can, it could potentially be, it's like 40% larger than the base 3060 Ti that like, you know, say your XC from EVGA. Huge card, huge cooling solution on this thing. So very capable of overclocking and doing all that stuff. So that's one upgrade right there. It also has the 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, which is the SL Unifan version of the Lean Lee Galahad uh, cooler here, which is just an awesome cooler. It looks great. And it has the SL uh, Unifans on there as well as the name would suggest. Also, it has the 32 gig RAM upgrade. Every Centurion comes base with 16 gigs of DDR4 3600 CL18 uh, RAM. Uh, I've been told that every system that has DDR4 will not, will not be shipped with DDR4 3600 CL16, which is a nice little boost in latency, which latency helps, lower latency helps with gaming. So that's another upgrade right there, plus the uh, Lian Lee streamer cables there, which is about a $150 upgrade right there, but it's you can see how bright they are. They add a ton of RGB to this build. And then of course, um, the storage, which is a Sabrent Rocket 4.0, one terabyte. So you get PCIe Gen 4 speeds for your storage. And um, it's just like all of these little choices, all of these little things, these details, make a difference in the feel of the build and actually the sort of overall performance as well. And uh, one of my favorite, oh, sorry. There, there you go. One of my favorite things about this thing is the uh, is the case, and uh, this case is the Lian Li Landcool 215. I mean, you see the size of these front intake fans. They're not just for show, although there's quite a bit of show. The larger front intake fans mean that, say, if you're going to use this system for streaming, which if you are, be sure to get the 32 gigs of RAM. It, it helps if you're going to be running a lot of applications in the background while also gaming and streaming. Anyway, the larger front intake fans mean that they can turn at a slower RPM and move the same volume of air as smaller fans do at higher RPM. Higher RPM is louder. So these, this system can be quieter and still keep everything absolutely cool. And uh, it's fantastic. So a uh, really nice case, full front mesh panel, and it actually does do a great job of keeping the dust out, as you see right there. So this is your dust filter right here. So no opening up the front panel on your PC to dust it. It's a very nice, get out of here, nice feature. There are a couple of cons to this case. I'll get to that later, but um, otherwise everything is, it's just such a solid system. Now, part of the ownership experience, of course, is receiving and unboxing your PC. And of course I did that live on stream. That's something that you will catch me doing now and then over on the Twitch channel. Go follow my Twitch channel so you can catch some streams. It's over at twitch.tv slash Brayathorn. But the unboxing is one part of the experience and it's good to know how a PC is packed. While some unboxing can be kind of silly, I feel like for PCs, it's pretty important. So yeah, we did cut that down into something that we could include in this video. So let me roll that for you. And then um, we'll get into the benchmarks and some of the results of the stress testing that I did. So 
Enjoy. Okay, once you open the box, this is roughly what you'll find. Of course, all of your motherboard stuff here. And then here, we have our checklist that Alexander PCs likes to do. And then one thing that you'll notice about Alexander PCs is that it's not just whatever packaging came with the uh, case, you're gonna get also some extra sort of ablative armor here on the outside with some extra cardboard. I say this every time I unbox a PC, don't throw away the packing materials that your PC came with, all right? Okay, so we have our literature for the motherboard right here. And of course, our very important stickers, certificate of reliability, um, and the, the manual for the Landcool 215 case, and for the um, Galahad AIO. This one does have a few options on it. Okay, some options that are not on this on the uh, on the base level model. That is our Wi-Fi antenna right here. Uh, one of these that comes, of course, with the cable, so you can mount it elsewhere. Speed setup booklet thing. I, I don't know what this is all about, but sure. Now this is one of my favorite cases. The Lancol 215 is so freaking good. It's, it's, a, it's got a great price to it, tons of airflow, a very unique fan setup, absolutely an awesome enclosure. And of course, we have our Instapack there to keep everything nice and snug. So let's go ahead and get this taken off here. Now one recommendation I have for you is however you see everything laid out in here to keep everything secure, take a photo of that. In case you need to RMA it back, you'll keep all these materials and the Instapack keeps its shape. So you'll know exactly how to fit it right back in. Of course, we have our, our etching, Alexander PCs. So if you have a vector file of a logo, like an outline, something like that, they can etch that for you into the glass. Now this has a Strix 3060 Ti in there, which is something that I can't wait to test because, oh, oh, look at, that, that's ridiculous. This is, I am offended at how freaking beautiful this, holy crap. And apparently this thing can go toe to toe with a baseline 3070 and we're gonna be testing that out later on. And here you'll see the Lean Lee Galahad, all in one liquid cooler, this is the 240 and this is the, um, this is the SL120 uh, Unifan edition. So these are Unifans up here. And I just love the Galahad. Look at that. So you have the magnet right here to cover up the Lee & Lee logo. And you just get this machi beautifully machined aluminum uh, disc that you can put in the center that just, bam, connects right there, covers up the logo, so you can have a logo-free look to it. And in here we have an Asus Tough Gaming Z690 motherboard, which is not bottom-of-the-line motherboard, entry-level Z690 motherboard like some are out there. This has actually got some really nice features to it and lots of connectivity, lots of M.2 sockets, everything we need. We got some T-Force white RAM there, uh, RGB, DDR, uh, DDR4. Uh, we have a 120 millimeter rear fan that is not RGB, but it is white to match the build. This should come with a Sabrent Gen 4, at least this one does. Not all of them will come with the same exact uh, M.2 drive. And then that's, really, that's, that's most of, of course, our power supplies down there. We'll take a good look at that. Here are the front fans. We're gonna see those come up, turn on in a bit and they are something special. Well, what we're gonna do first, before we get to that, we gotta check out the cable management in this sucker because they do not mess around with cable management. Clean, clean, clean. And uh, you have spaces here for two SSDs. You have a hard drive bay down here for your, for up to two um, mechanical hard drives. And in here we have a 750 watt EVGA G5 gold rated fully modular power supply. And all of the extra cables are just in there. They're not tucked away somewhere where you have to go find them. If you need to just suddenly connect something like uh, an add-in card that needs SATA or Molex power, all the stuff is just in there, uh, ready to go. We have our fan controller, right up, uh, fan hub right up here. We have the one for the um, for the Unifans here. This is one that comes with the case. This is one that comes with the with the, the AIO, and this is what comes with the strimmers. Now, there are new versions of the Lee and Lee strimmers out that actually connect to and are controlled by. It can be controlled by motherboard RGB software. Uh, this is gonna be the version before that. So looking forward to the new ones, seeing how they are, because you do have to open the side of the case in order to change the colors using these buttons right here. But looking at the cable management, it's just, it's perfect. I mean, there's nothing to complain about here. Oh, hold on. There we go. All right, it's terrible. I had to fix it. 
Come on, TJ. And in certain spots, of course, you have Velcro straps rather than uh, zip ties, but the zip ties are used liberally to keep everything together nice and tight. You have plenty of expansion, two 2.5 inch SSDs here and two hard drives there. So you have plenty of expansion here for more than you need, honestly, for a gaming system, considering that you can put three M.2s on the motherboard as well. So you've got tons of ways to add storage to this thing. But yeah, it is quite clean. Everything looks really good to me. Now, one thing I might comment on here is that the AIO is set up as exhaust underneath here. And personally, I mean, this is the best place to store this whenever if, you know, if you're shipping it. But personally, I like to remove any kind of mesh wherever there's exhaust. You don't need to keep dust in the system. You need to keep dust out of the system. So this can go into the box that you receive the PC with. That's how I do it. Um, I just do not like to restrict access to, uh, I don't like to restrict exhaust at all. One of the things I love most about the Landcool 215 is gonna be the front fans. You've got um, 200 millimeter RGB fans on the front here with a fine mesh on the front. So that is your dust filter. So you don't have to open it up to filter out the dust. And um, because they're such large fans, they can run at a lower RPM and still move the same volume of air. So if you're into streaming, and you have this thing right next to you, it's going to be less noisy because of these fans. Now on the IO side, this is of course from Lee and Lee, uh, and you've got a combination headphone and a microphone jack, two USB type A, and these should be 3.0. So you have an LED control button here, a reset button, and a power button right there. Uh, one thing I'd love to see here, they ship it with the power supply off. Although I would turn eco mode off and leave that as an option for the customer. You have um, one cool thing about the Strix card is that you're actually gonna have two HDMI and then three DisplayPort. On the motherboard itself, you have an HDMI port and a DisplayPort on board because this CPU does have, um, you know, an IGP, integrated graphics in it. You have two Type-C ports there. One of them is the 20 gig, okay? Um, you have six Type-A ports. Two of them are five gigabit, and then two of them should be, I believe that's 10. 2.5 gig Ethernet and Wi-Fi 6 included with your 7.1 surround sound and SPDIF out. Yeah, Tough Gaming is a, is a great gaming motherboard. It's got everything a growing gamer needs. Enough getting into the nitty gritty like that. Let's power this beast up and see what she looks like. Oh yeah. That is a beacon in the night. Look at that. Ah, oh, it's gorgeous. Now I wanna point out something, a lot of people you know, the average person out there who doesn't really care about airflow, stuff like that, might look at a mesh front panel and think, oh, that's not gonna look that great. It's not gonna look as good as glass. It catches and diffuses the light. Look at this from the side. You cannot see the fans. Look at how diffused and beautiful that is. Be sure to stick around, be sure to get subscribed and come check out the stream. If you wanna see more stuff like this, let me know in the comments and come follow the stream, twitch.tv slash Brayathorn. I stream every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday at around 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. And there's gonna be more unboxing. I did, I've done a full PC build on, on there and I'm gonna be doing more stuff like that, more DIY stuff. And uh, of course, if you just want help getting the gaming PC of your dreams, figure out your budget, what you wanna do with it, come in, let me know, get in the queue and I'll help you out and we'll find it for you live on stream. Now, this system starts at $1,898. And if you heard the specs that I said earlier, you might be thinking to yourself like, whoa, 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 whoa. I could build that way cheaper. I'm gonna go immediately to the comments and make sure that Brayathorn knows that. I know that. I'm, I've been DIY for decades now, like for 20 years, I know that other, you know, excluding the last two years until a few months ago. Uh, yes, it's always been cheaper to build it yourself. Of course it is. But there, for one thing, there are a ton of people out there who would rather not for whatever reason. And guess what? That's okay. That's totally fine. In fact, if you're really into pressuring people to get into your hobby of DIY, I get that feeling. I know that feeling. DIY is really satisfying, it's great to do, it's a cool hobby, but it's not for everyone, and you need to remember that. You also need to remember that some people have legitimate reasons for not wanting to build a PC themselves, but the main thing to remember is that pre-built or custom pre-built PCs are a great gateway into DIY. You know, you get something like this a couple years from then, 
upgrade your RAM, add some storage, maybe even start modding it a few months after you get it. Now, the thing is, you can also find pre-built with similar specifications for less money. So what's the deal? Why, why get it from Alexander PCs? Well, for one thing, you're gonna find that most other system integrators, many other system integrators, will not put as much attention to detail into the other components other than the ones that get your attention, the CPU and the GPU. You're gonna get the pretty much most baseline motherboard that they can get in whatever particular chipset you're gonna get, you know, PCIe Gen 3 storage, which is not always something that is shouted out at you, okay? You're usually gonna find that they'll get, they'll use the absolute baseline power supply that they can, and it's maybe not gonna be a brand name one. That's not always a problem, don't get me wrong. But if that's something that would bother you, you need to know about that. There are also other things to consider as well. You know, there's, there's the basic thing where, it's a smaller company selling at smaller volumes, meaning that they can't sell at as low of prices as say maybe iBuyPower, which is the largest system integrator in North America, if not the world. They sold more computers than Dell last year, okay? They can tend to do smaller profit margins on their PCs and still keep the lights on. That's how their business model works, not how it works for smaller system integrators, especially boutique style system integrators. That's just economics. But on the other side of things, there is value that can be very difficult to quantify. Um, there's the customer service, the warranty, that's a big one here. Things like shipping, which is already baked into the price of this if you're in the uh, lower 48 states of the US, that's already in that price, it's done, that's in there. Uh, the warranty is as well. And if you're wanting to extend that warranty, good luck because it's a lifetime parts and labor warranty. Now, before you start being like, oh wait, whoa, no, there's no such thing. Yeah, anyone who gets a lifetime warranty should know that that's warranties for the lifetime of the company, right? That's how lifetime warranties work. But aside from that, over at Alexander PCs, they intend for that lifetime parts and labor warranty to be everything you would think it should be. So, barring you taking a bat to this thing and beating the heck out of it, if your processor dies in seven years, they will replace it for you. If your, your, your storage gets fried, you know, they will replace it for you, whatever. Those kinds of things can turn something as, I wouldn't say mundane, but you know, it's not as big of an investment as you might think, but it turns your PC into an investment because it's guaranteed to work. That's how much uh, faith Alexander PCs puts into the, the components that they buy. That's why they get higher quality components and the, the build quality of what they put together. And I can attest to that because I, this is my second review of one of their systems. I previously reviewed the, the Hoplite, and that was, you know, a $1,200, $1,300 system that was built with great care. All right, now let's talk about how this thing actually runs. So I ran a full, a full gamut of stress testing with, um, I usually will lean on Cinebench R23 and uh, the Heaven Benchmark Mutagen, and I'll also run, you know, Furmark for a while and see what temperatures get up to. So really it's just stressing out the CPU for one thing and then stressing out the GPU. Now, there's two things I want to address about the CPU and the GPU. First off, the 12600K, I feel like with how, how powerful the 12700K can be, the 12600K is kind of overlooked, but it's very good. I mean, if this is actually, if you're looking to get into some content creation, this is a heck of a PC for that. The 12600K, has uh, six performance cores and four efficiency cores. All right, that's a 10 core processor. Now those four efficiency cores are, you know, lower frequency, smaller cores, and the performance cores are the big beefy ones, and they're also hyper-threaded. So that means there's two threads per, per performance core and one thread per efficiency core. So you have a 10 core, 16 thread processor. It's kind of weird, but it turns out that this configuration and the all, uh, the Alder Lake uh, 12th Gen Intel's hybrid architecture is very good for content creation. As a matter of fact, Puget Bench showed that the 12600K outperforms the Ryzen 9 5900X in Adobe Premiere Pro. So this thing will perform admirably in, in video editing. As a matter of fact, it, I had my, my main machine was a 5900X for video editing before. And knowing that this thing was at MSRP of like half of the, you know, or less than half of the Ryzen 9 when it 
when they both had the original MSRPs, it's, it's crazy to think about. On the other hand though, the let's talk about the 3060 Ti. Now most people out there that have come into my streams, I've had a lot of people come into the streams and say, well, I gotta have a 3080 or something, right? If I want a real gaming PC. I've said in a few of my videos, most gamers out there, all you need is a 3060 Ti and you're good to go. Now, why, do I land, why did I land on that one? Well, the 3060 Ti is an interesting GPU. You would think if you have, you know, a, a tiered GPUs, right? You know, your, your 3060, 3060 Ti, 3070, 3070 Ti, 3080, yada, yada, yada that they would aim to have them be pretty equidistant from each other in performance, but that's not the case here. In fact, the 3060 Ti is higher up, it's farther away from the 3060 than it is from the 3070. The 3070 is pretty, it's, I wouldn't say it's super close in performance, but you're talking about you know, maybe a 25% uplift over the 3060, but being about 10 to 15% under the 3070. And then that's the baseline, and these are rough numbers, okay? That's the baseline 3060 Ti. Then you take one like this that Asus decided to just make into an absolute superhero and it can get up there and pretty much compete with a 3070 that's more on the baseline end of 3070s. So when I have someone come in and say that they need a 3080, I will very often have them say like, yeah, I'm gonna game at 1080p, it's just gaming. I'm like, you don't need a 3080. That is a waste of money. It's not just that, when you over spec on your GPU, you need to build up the foundation of your system as well. Make sure that you have an adequate power supply. And that, that, that can be a real issue. In this case, I've recommended the 3060 Ti for those wanting to game on a monitor like this. 1440p, 144 hertz. First off, I tend to lean more towards recommending Nvidia myself because I like a more well-rounded card. Even if you don't feel like you're gonna stream right now or do any kind of content creation or do anything like that, you may decide to in the future. And Nvidia just has you know, better video encoding and just different things like that. It's just a better, more well-rounded, uh, say, ecosystem. But they also have something else going for them. And yes, I know, FSR 2.0, all those things that AMD's got going on for them, yeah. But some of those technologies are usable by NVIDIA cards too, so that's not really a selling point for AMD. It's cool that they did that, but NVIDIA's got their DLSS. And let me tell you something, DLSS is kind of amazing. Also kind of frustrating <laughs> for when you're trying to benchmark. If you're trying to benchmark for performance, you have to turn off DLSS if you wanna get a comparison between something like a 3060 Ti and a 3070, because it's just going to like add so many frames per second. It's just, it, it, is, it is really a cheat code. It's crazy if the game of course is compatible, if it's capable of running DLSS. Now, the results were interesting. They were, and you're gonna see them. But first, let's see how these things perform under stress when it comes to thermals. With Cinebench R23 running multi-core, the multi-core test for 10 minutes to sort of let the, the liquid in the, the all-in-one liquid cooler reach thermal equilibrium, the uh, processor, this is, this, this, thing, this cooler is overkill for the 12600K. You could run on a single tower air cooler and do just fine with the 12600K if it's a good one, if you have good airflow in your case. Uh, but yeah, the maximum temperature, 62 degrees Celsius after 10 minutes of hammering every core with a nightmare of tile-based rendering. Now, when it comes to the GPU, because when you look at the CPU, you know, it's gonna have fresh air coming in through here and then exiting out through here through the radiator and cooling it really well. Whereas the GPU doesn't have fans feeding it directly, but you do have this front fan pushing air back there. It doesn't have fans like from the bottom, like you wouldn't like an O11 style case. However, even with that, Running the Unigen Heaven benchmark, and after having run Unigen Heaven for um, a little while there, max temperature, 58.7 Celsius. It's just the, the absolute unit of a cooling solution on the ROG Strix card. So yeah, the cooling, 100%. Seal of approval. Right throwing seal of approval. I need to make a seal uh, of, a, of approval to put on there. So everything good there. And I also ran Fermark as well. It did bring the temperatures higher because Fermark is every GPU's nightmare. Uh, but the maximum was 66 degrees Celsius. That's it. You're not gonna see a GPU throttle until 80 degrees Celsius. There is tons of room to overclock. Speaking of which, Alexander PCs is kind enough to facilitate that for you. It doesn't have bloatware. They don't put bloatware on here, okay? All it comes with, is actual software for some of your hardware here, like Asus's GPU tweak, all right? So you can actually go in there and do a single click overclock for your GPU. So just so you know, 
No bloatware came with this thing. And that's what you're gonna get with most system integrators. OEMs, on the other hand, like your HP Omen and Dell slash Alienware and Lenovo or Lenovo Legion, they'll be putting more of their proprietary software or bloatware, uh, antivirus trials and stuff like that on your PC. And that's one of the reasons, one of the many reasons that I don't really encourage going with an OEM. So let's talk about um, Cyberpunk 2077, one of the hardest games to run, pretty much, okay? Not, the reason that I'm sticking with AAA titles, by the way, is because if you're trying to run esports titles, like you know, CSGO or Rocket League at 1440p with a 3060 Ti, you have nothing to worry about. It will, if it can run these games, it can run esports titles, is what I'm saying. Now, the way I tested it was, I tested in every setting with uh, low, medium, high, ultra, and then low with ray tracing, medium with ray tracing, and then ultra with ray tracing, okay? I did that without DLSS on, and then I did it with DLSS on, and that's when things get a little silly. But I didn't do it with DLSS for the 3070, not really any point to it, as you'll see. So, with DLSS off, the average FPS at low was 110, medium, 97 FPS, high was 91, ultra was 67 FPS. Okay, that's with no ray tracing on. Now, with something that's a AAA title, like a cinematic title, like Cyberpunk 2077, if you get more than 60 frames per second, you're usually good. You're not needing super fast graphics like you do with something that's like a competitive title. But looking at your high settings, hitting 91 frames per second, that's very good. It also shows you the difference between, and the reason I say not to run ultra settings, going from 91 to 67, for those tiny little things that going from high settings to ultra give you, you, you'll barely be able to tell the difference between high settings and ultra. However, your GPU sure can tell a difference. So you stick with high, high graphics. I do that with my 3090. Like I don't run ultra graphics on my 3090. It's just gonna suck power for no reason and it's just gonna put out more heat. And I live in Texas, no thank you. Now with ray tracing on, for low, we hit the average of 49 FPS, and the medium settings were 30 FPS and 24 FPS with ultra with ray tracing. Now that's clearly where it becomes a bit of a problem, where it goes under 60 FPS, but that's where DLSS comes in. But before the DLSS results for the 3060 Ti, let's compare with the 3070, all right? The 3070 on low hit 121 frames per second, on medium, 98 frames per second, on high, it was about 93 frames per second, and on ultra, it was matched at 67 frames per second. So it's very, very close. We're talking about a few percent difference in Cyberpunk in particular. Now with ray tracing on, there was that's when you started to get closer to uh, 60 FPS in low settings with ray tracing at 54 frames per second, 33 frames per second at medium with ray tracing, and 27 average frames per second with ultra ray tracing. I do have the minimum FPS and max FPS as well on those numbers, but we're just trying to make a basic comparison here. And uh, I didn't notice any wide deltas when it came to the minimum, which is minimum FPS can make a big difference in your enjoyment of and the smoothness of gameplay. But I didn't notice any huge deltas in that, any huge differences. Now, let's talk about the 3060 Ti with DLSS. This is just silly. Nvidia, I don't know what you did. I, kind of, I mean, I kind of know what you did, yes, but it's crazy. All right, this is a 3060 Ti. When I turned on DLSS, it basically just flattened the whole line across the way. It was mind boggling. On low, 137 FPS. Average on medium, 137 FPS. On high, 136 FPS. On ultra, 134 FPS. And then here, look, listen. Low with ray tracing, 134 FPS. Medium with ray tracing, 134 FPS. Ultra with ray tracing, 134 FPS. I, I, I have the screenshots. I got the receipts. That is how it ran. It's ridiculous. Now, the way that DLSS works, DLSS is deep learning super sampling. And what it does is it uses the tensor cores in their GPUs, this is dedicated hardware for this, that will uh, it will take an image, render it, it'll render a frame at a lower resolution, and then use sort of an AI, sort of, it's, they, they call it deep learning neural network buzzword 
you know, and it will then upscale it for you. It renders really quickly at a lower resolution and then DLSS fills in the pixels that are missing to give you that high resolution image. And just hearing those sentences doesn't mean much, but it has shown, they have a graph on their website showing that it's it can improve frame rates and specifically Cyberpunk 2077 by up to 333%. And honestly, I believe that, that's crazy. But for all of these, I set it to, to auto, basically. I let it automatically decide how I wanted to do it. And it'll dynamically change, whether it's set to performance or quality. But if you want to get maybe better visual fidelity with maybe a slightly lower frame rate, go for the quality setting. And if you want just as many frames as it can get, go for the performance setting. It's in, in any game that has DLSS, you'll usually have those options. DLSS allowed this 3060 Ti to outperform the 3070 if we, if we were not using DLSS. So it's kind of the great equalizer here. So what it means though, is that even though you could probably get a higher end GPU in a, with another system integrator basically for the same price, you don't have to. And then you can have a company that invests more of that price into the other components. You're not getting the most baseline motherboard. You're not getting slower RAM. You're not getting slower storage. All these things can lead to bottlenecks. We don't like bottlenecks. It's a well-balanced system, something that I usually will encourage people to get. A well-balanced system just works better. If you put a race car engine into a beat up car that's like missing a, a wheel and, and the doors have fallen off and you can barely turn the steering wheel, it doesn't matter how nice a race car engine is and how fast it could theoretically go, it doesn't have the foundation to go fast. This thing basically takes a really great GPU from Nvidia and gives it all the support that it would need. It takes that and it basically makes it like a showcase for what that Nvidia card can do. So, man, it's just, I don't know what to tell you. The performance was amazing. Let's move on to the next game. The next game was Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, this game that I just liked and I played it and then I realized it had a benchmark so I included it because the visuals are really, really cool. Also a really good story. You should play that game. It's really cool. Anyway, not sponsored by Gardens of the Galaxy. Average FPS on low with no ray tracing, 145, 145 SP FPS on low. Medium, 125. High was 121. Very high was 120. And ultra, ultra settings, average was 117 frames per second. It's fantastic. Like that's that's just at 1440p. I didn't run any of these tests at 1080. Everything was run at 1440p. Okay, because I'm out to prove this card can be a 1440p beast if that's the resolution you're wanting to game at, all right? You don't need to go higher than a 3060 Ti if you're in a well-built system and you have your settings right. Now, with ray tracing, still pretty good. On low, 92 frames per second. On medium, Average was 90 frames per second. On high, for some reason, it was still 90 frames per second. I don't know. On very high, it was 73 frames per second. And then on ultra, we finally dipped below 60 with 59 frames per second. So you can run this thing native resolution on ultra if you want to, because it was basically, there's gonna be run to run variants basically. It can go up to 61 or down to 57. You know, you're gonna lose or gain a couple frames per second. That's just, you know, I can only run these so many times. now. With DLSS, the results are a little bit different than with Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk really revved up that DLSS, but with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, it scaled a little bit better. Now, and all, all of these I ran with ray tracing and DLSS. I didn't run any of these without ray tracing. It's just all ray tracing plus DLSS. So it went from 92 on low up to 124. Average FPS for medium was 123. For high settings, it was 119 frames per second. For very high, it was 113 frames per second. And then on ultra with ray tracing, 101 frames per second with DLSS. So there you have it. DLSS made a huge difference but it was also playable at native resolution. I think both of those are things that I should emphasize. That's awesome all around. The next game I, I, I benchmarked was, um, and it's one I haven't in included before, but it's interesting to me. On Red Dead Redemption 2, you can choose to run either uh, DirectX 12 or Vulkan graphics engine, and either one can run. So I wanted to see what the differences might be between the two. Now on Red Dead Redemption 2, I did test the 3070 as well as the 3060 Ti. So uh, this is just comparing the two to show you the margins between the two 
are not so wide. And at, at least with the ROG Strix version here, that can be pushed a little bit farther because of the massive cooling solution on it and all that. Basically, the way that you can set your graphics really easily in, um, in a Rockstar game like Red Dead Redemption 2 or uh, GTA 5 or online is it's just it's a slider. You can have it favor performance, have it balanced, or have it favor quality. Okay, it's not really the, the there, and there's a bit of a gradation there, a little bit of a gradient there, but I just slammed it all the way to one side, put it in the middle, and slammed it all the way to the other side just to get some numbers here. So on DirectX 12, the 3060 Ti got on to favor performance 125 frames per second for balanced. 77 frames per second and favoring quality 70 frames per second on Vulcan it ran better actually 131 frames per second favoring performance 82 frames per second favoring balance and then 73 frames per second favoring quality so all of those numbers are good and playable for one of these games I would say run balanced that's just that it looks good still and it, it runs awesome I wouldn't run it on favor performance because everything looks like potatoes so running balanced probably the way to go, or somewhere in between that and quality. Run it however you like. Find what works for you. Whatever anyone else tells you, finding your own balance between smoothness and performance and visual fidelity, that's where you will find what you enjoy and how you enjoy gaming. Now, let's compare this to the 3070. For the 3070 under DirectX 12, we got, uh, for favoring performance, we got 136 frames per second. Under balance, we got 84. And favoring quality, we got the same 70 frames per second as the 3060 Ti. With Vulkan, it was a bit more of an improvement with 139 frames per second favoring performance. Favoring balance or balanced, it was 84 frames per second matching. But for favoring quality, it did a bit better at 78 frames per second. So it's not a huge gulf between these two cards. The 3070 is just, this RG Strix 3060 Ti is just, just catching up. Uh, it's just keeping right up with it. So basically, I guess Asus took a card that was already kind of sort of edging closer to the 3070 than its predecessor, the card under it, the 3060, and then just amped it up and amped it up. Of course, you could get a 3070 Strix, you know, just buying one, and then you'll have the same kind of uptick in performance, very likely, but I still think the 3060 Ti is really where most gamers need to be. It's like all you need. It performs amazing. It's freaking awesome. Anyway, I, I, I like it a lot. Let's talk about a couple things that I, that I don't like about the build now that I've had it here for a while. Stuff that I would have overlooked, probably, otherwise. It's actually mostly with the case, and it's just two minor things. Now, I don't like the dust filter, on this thing. I'm kind of spoiled by the O11 XL where I can kind of like just from the side pull the dust filter out and clean it out without having to move my PC at all. The Lancool 215 has one that you have to pull out from the back and it goes all the way to the front. So you can't just pull it out towards your wall. You actually have to move your PC to get that dust filter out. And yes, please, please clean out that dust filter. Your power supply here has the fan facing down and it's pulling up dust and it gets stuck in that filter. If you want your power supply to perform well, you need to clean that dust filter. Once a month, once every two months, something like that, depending on how dusty your room is. The other thing is, it's another kind of minor thing, is that uh, this case, the Lancol 215, is slightly dated, not really dated, but slightly. So it doesn't have a USB Type-C front panel, a front IO connection. Now some Lee and Lee cases are like this, where they'll have sort of a blank there that says USB-C, and then you have to buy the adapter for it. This doesn't even have that. But the motherboard, has a front panel USB Type-C header, but I got a cheap fix for that that's really nice. Of course, maybe not this one because it's got a black PC, uh, PCIe slot cover, but this is just off of Amazon, maybe like 12 to $15. Has your connection for a front panel USB-C header, and then this just goes on the back of your PC, and there is your USB Type-C. And uh, this, very cheap, and you'll still get all the connectivity that you would be missing out on without it. It's just that you can't plug it into the front of your PC. But if you're trying to do something like a USB Type-C hub, which can have a lot of great throughput, definitely a good little investment there. It is not that expensive. And they have some that have more, you know, like silvery kind of finishes there. It might be one with a white cover. I don't think so though, but you know, your results may vary. And then there was one bit of weirdness that I had noticed here and there where uh, Ari and I, uh, whenever we do get to game together, we like to play Stardew Valley. It's an awesome game if you've never played it. It's really, really good. Uh, great to chill out after a long day. And uh, playing that game, Sometimes when she would close it, and also some other games, when I was running benchmarks, this happened once or twice. When you'll close a game, uh, I, you know, I'll get no picture, just no display out, until I unplug and replug in the HDMI. 
Now that's probably something that's super easily fixed. If I just call in, I did update the drivers for the GPU, but it's something that you could talk to Alexander PCs about if it happens to you. And it's not likely to, because I haven't heard of it happening to anybody else in the Discord. So it's just a fluke of this one here. It's just something that I need to mention. It's not really that, I mean, this isn't hard to get to or anything. We don't put our PCs on the floor, by the way. Don't put your PC on the floor. Remember the thing about the fan at the bottom pulling up dust? It's worse if it's on carpet. Don't ever do that. Anyway, I just say that, but really easy to reach. I just unplug the HDMI, plug it back in, good to go. No problem. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, it's performed so well. I'm gonna be really sad to see this thing go because I have to send it back. And yes, by the way, I usually have to send back PCs that are sent to me for review. I don't just have a mountain of PCs that I'm just like here, like in a tower, diving into them like Scrooge McDuck into his like coins, which should probably hurt him more than it does every time he does it. How did he not, uh, whatever, anyway. Uh, but really there's not, like it's just, it's such a solid system. I find that I had to nitpick like that. I had to nitpick, oh, I did USB-C on the case and, who knows, they might switch over to the Lancol 216 eventually, although I wish they hadn't switched from the 200 millimeter fans down to 160 millimeter fans. I don't know why they did that, but whatever. Uh, when those eventually are, 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 are here in the States, it takes time to ship stuff. I don't know if there are any here available yet, but that one has USB type C front panel header, so uh, uh, connection, so then that would fix that problem. Or maybe I can convince TJ to get some of these because they're not expensive. And then you get all your connectivity. What's up, TJ? You gonna get one of these? They're cheap. And they work. I've used them several times. Anyway, yeah, honestly, um, the Windows 11 experience has been great. It's been fine. And for 12th gen Intel, you want Windows 11 because uh, the scheduler is better for the hybrid architecture. So you're gonna use those performance cores and efficiency cores just right with that. This thing could game and stream with these upgrades that it has with the um, 32 gigs of RAM. You don't necessarily need the streamer cables, but they're really nice looking. And if you don't like RGB, you can just turn it off. This also comes in black too. You can get the system in black and it'll come with a matching uh, black AIO for your cooling and black RAM as well. So, I mean, really it's, it, it, there, there's really not, if there's something about this that you're like, well, I don't know because I don't like this. Turn off the RGB if you want, no problem. Or you know what? And if noise is a problem for you, I, this has been on. It li here, listen, this is, so you hear this? Listen to this. All right, listen to this mouse click. Listen to this mouse click. If you don't like a noisy PC, there you go. There's your answer. I don't know, man, I got nothing bad to say about this. It's not for lack of trying either. I, I mean, I put this thing through hell to try and get it to break and it wouldn't do it. I've been running it for months. This is not just an off the cuff kind of thing. TJ's like, hey, uh, when's that review coming out? I'm like, it will. <laughs> Don't worry, but I was able to spend a lot of time with this and I appreciate the patience of everyone over there at Alexander PCs. I am happy for everyone, uh, the members of my community who's gotten one of these. And don't forget that there is a $50 off uh, discount you can get using my code. Now, if you're uh, active duty military, a veteran, law enforcement, or a firefighter, talk to them directly, which is at uh, admin at uh, alexanderpcs.com about getting a $100 discount. But if you're not one of those things, you still get 50 bucks off. And the code for that is in the Discord in the coupon codes channel, because we've had to change it once. We might have to change it again. So I'm not gonna say it in the video because then it can change and you go and be like, oh, that code doesn't work. He, that Braythorn fellow was a liar and a scamp. And he's very handsome. I don't know if you'd say that, but probably. But yeah, go down to the link in the description below click on that Discord link. If you don't already have Discord, are you you should get it specifically to join the Swarm. It's a super cool community, especially if you like talking PC stuff. Anyway, I hope to see you guys in the next video or on stream sometime soon. Again, I stream at twitch.tv slash Brayathorn every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday at around 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. And uh, new videos at least every Monday. So yeah, I'll see you guys soon. And until then, take care. Thank you.